Okay, today we're heading for a kayak tour. We're working with Kayak Alawalu, which is uh, run out of the Camp Alawalu campgrounds. And so everything leaves from there. And you get there by going to Camp Alawalu and you enter through a controlled gate that this is the front office that you come up to. You come up to the gate, they'll give you an access code. You punch it into a keypad and then you come on through and then there's parking right there by the offices. Uh, in addition, once you get your keypad and you get checked in, uh, they will give you a, uh, a little number to put on the dash of your car and then an access code that will get you in and out of the gate for as long as you're staying there, whether you're on the tour or whether you're camping there. And, and then, then this is the defined pass that they have all around the camp area. There's four type of campsite options here. Um, this little path will take you on down to the beach where you will meet our, your kayak tour as well as just the beach area. But as you follow this path around, you will go to, it will take you to first uh, about 35 primitive campsites. And this is where you would use tents or anything like that. Uh, it has no electricity. It has no wa water. And also you could share, they do have shared bathroom and access to bathrooms and showers. And each campsite is assigned to some of those bathrooms and showers because there's several of them. So as you see here, this is where you are kind of walking around to the primitive campsites. And then it also has 15 car campsites, which you can park your car. If you have a tent on your car, you can use that or you can sleep in your car. But there's about 15 of those. But our favorite, what we really thought would be cool to stay in, was these ten alos that they have. Yeah, they've got 21 of the ten alos kind of scattered throughout. It's a real pretty area that they've got. A lot of green area that you can have. There's, there's a lot of uh, picnic tables out in front in the shared areas, fire pits, different things that you can, uh, barbecues that you can use. Um, each of the tenelos, there are two different types. There's one with two twin beds and there are ones with uh, four twin beds. And each one, there are no air conditioning. Uh, they do have electricity. You have a, I think there's a fan in them. Uh, they also set up off the ground. So they're, it's a raised platform. Uh, they have flaps that you can pull down for a little bit of privacy on the front and sides. Uh, that's again it's a real pretty area that they have the the ones that have four beds you'll have a, a nice big porch out front with four chairs the two beds you have a porch out front with which is two chairs uh, we happen to be walking by one that they were cleaning one day and it looks like they just take a water hose and rinse off the floor <laughs> and uh, pretty uh, pretty basic and then this next one that we're kind of coming up to, it also shows that each one comes with an ice chest in a, a storage locker. And then we're going to walk down the side of this one so we can show you a little bit of in the inside of it. But this one right here that we're looking at had four twin beds and four chairs up front on their balcony. And if you look inside here, it did have electricity. It was kind of cool. You have four little twin beds and open air screen kind of on the windows which you can open the flap there and then in the back here each one came with a private sink and a private shower no toilet but a private sink and a private shower with um, hot water on demand with those showers mm -hmm. and then here is the private bathrooms that you would actually share and each of the tenelos there you're assigned to certain bathrooms and they have numbers on the front of them that tell you if it's you know for what number your tent is and inside of those, you have a, a sink, a toilet, and, and a mirror that you can use. And again, those are shared with other, other units, but they're very well designated and easy to determine which one is yours. And then they also have these little vending machine areas that you could come in and I, you know, get different type of things from this vending machine. Another cool locker here and some outside sinks here as well. And so uh, they had... I think one of these, it might've been two yeah, of these. Yeah, there may have been one, this, there was one for sure, may have been another one around. And this is our beach area, which we're getting ready to kayak right off the beach area. And we're getting all set up with our kayak place. And and once you, where you kayak here is you go right off the beach and you kayak over what is known as the Alawalu Reef. 
and it is uh, one of the most Hawaii's most unique reef, reef systems and it's also known to a lot of people as the turtle reef because of the number of sea turtles that you'll see and uh, it's located at mile marker 14 on highway 30 about four miles outside of Lahaina yeah and this area that you actually can camp at and then we did the kayaking at right across the street from this uh, camp area they also had a general store yep. and then they had Leota's Kitchen and Pie Shop, which is a great, if you like pie, it's a great pie shop. They've got, they do lunch and late afternoon um, dinner. Uh, they close pretty early, so not really open for dinner, but a great place to stop if you want a pie. And then back behind here, you had the West Maui Mountains, which was really pretty. And then we, 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 we kayaked pretty far off the shore here, but it never got really too deep because there's a lot of sand channels yeah. and we're around the reef area and so we're kayaking here out to one of those sand channels as you can see right below us and then once we hit one of those he will tie us up and um, anchor down our kayaks so we can jump in yeah. and try to do some snorkeling and they and they do give you the option of uh of having flotation device you have to have a, a life jacket on while you're kayaking out but they give you the option of either using or not using one while you're while you're snorkeling depends on your comfort level and then i was kind of nervous about okay once i get out of this kayak and i can't touch because i mean it's not deep but it's it's you know you're not being able to touch how do i pull myself back up in this <laughs> kayak but i think he studied the kayak when i pulled myself yeah. back up but it wasn't too hard really yeah. i was really surprised and uh we're like i said we we anchor over the top of one of the channels and uh, the guide recommended that you know you you try to snorkel primarily in the channels and just up alongside the reef because the waves sometimes if you got up over above the reef you could kind of get knocked down on it so so we tried to stay within the channels and that seemed to be where the the better snorkeling was and so here we go 